four toddlers, four days a week, every week to the OR. 400,000 public school children in Philadelphia, 85% on public assistance. 95% of DC kids in Ward 7 and 8 living in poverty. Poverty, lower in many parts of the country, just rose in Philadelphia. And of greatest importance, a little six-year-old boy covering his mouth during a kid smiles, happy smile picture day because I have ugly teeth. These are the reasons that Kid Smiles has a mission to provide a clinical dental home and health empowerment programs in two markets with four offices. Thank you so much for inviting us to be here today. I'm Cheryl Jansen, the CEO of Kid Smiles, and you do not know the irony of me talking about technology, which is why Kate Flanagan, the <laughs> forensic scientist, is with me today to actually talk about the study. <clears throat> Our nonprofit dental centers, oh, and I'm very scripted, because I could talk eight hours about what I was gonna do for six months 16 years ago. So, our nonprofit dental centers provide outstanding dental care and services to over 75,000 children of record and offer 30,000 dental services per office per year in the Philadelphia market and 10,000 services in Washington, D.C. We use all of our staff to the height of their licenses, conversation we heard today. We also hire from the community and provide training and education opportunities for people from the the community. We do this to ensure we have a sustainable financial model. Our model does rely on revenue from Medicaid, CHIP, and private grants and donations for our broader programs. Thank you. <clears throat> we believe that providing dental care is a critical goal to prevent disease. It is also incumbent on us to strive to change behaviors and to be a positive influence in the lives of the children we serve. My great friend in this room, Dr. Mark Goldstein, many years ago said this to me, it is not enough to just drill and fill because drill and fill will continue on. Our outreach and education team deliver programs to over 300 community partners. Some of our programs, number one is our uh, grin and share it program. That's like Give Kids a Smile Day every day. We provide free services to kids that don't have any kind of coverage. We have a signature Dental Detectives Academy. That is a formal curriculum that we offer in our waiting room so that our parents can hear the program and understand uh, how to improve their child's overall health. And the kids graduate, and it's awesome. And what we know is only 50% of those kids do better with all of that effort. 50% stay the same or do worse. We have a, a collaboration with CHOP where we take this program into their waiting room, and we've moved 3% of their children, 3% more, are now accessing care. We provide room-to-room -room education to Head Starts, all types of schools, and dental screenings, of course. Fiscal and social responsibility require that we examine the results and outcomes to assure that we are having impact and success. We strive to modify and adapt the programs to assure high impact and evidence-based results. A really current exciting pilot for us is trialing an electronic screening tool that has been developed by Dr. Joseph Greenberg and Dr. Steven Sinclair. It collects and compiles screening results. The tool is designed to compile the data easily, consistently, and uniformly. It also then has the ability to compile the data into a format that can be analyzed and shared for comparison and tracking industry-wide. How many of us in this room do screenings? What are we doing with the information? Another question we're asking is, why? What are we investigating? So we know kids have disease. In our case, we can get them into uh, our offices. But we have done thousands of screenings. We have the data, as do many others, but it is not easy to share it outwardly. Also, we're asking, how accurate is the information? From hygienist to hygienist, from dentist to hygienist, how uniform are the results? And of greatest importance, if these parents are getting this information, is there a false sense of security that their child has had an exam and then they're not doing anything more with it, or are they actually moving them to care? The first phase of the study is designed to assess the simplicity or the challenges in using the tool. 
This tool could become a universal tool for screenings and sharing, but it needs to be able to be consistent and easy to use. So now Kate Flanagan will share about the tool. This one on? We're good with this one. Okay. So um, the first part of my presentation um, and our analysis for this tool was to identify problems with the current screening process. Um, so first, we decided that there was no global tool that makes screenings efficient or allows sharing between years within an organization or amongst the community. Um, screenings were personally used but could be given greater insight to our communities, um, which is something someone had touched on about just the overall lack of data we have. Um, information is currently not shareable because of the lack of consistency. So some organizations are doing screenings one way, it works best for them, but we can't correlate those screenings to each other. Um, no report on each child, so everybody is looked at individually and the picture isn't being examined as a whole. Um, it's one thing that needs to be addressed because a screening individually is great for a child, it's doing nothing for our community. Um, the process also isn't streamlined, so we're not maximizing the use of our public health hygienist um, because everybody's doing it the way that works best for them as opposed to a way that we can all benefit from. Um, another simple problem with it is that there's a paper trail being created. Um, it's tough to maintain and it doesn't allow us to efficiently track each patient year over year. Um, this data is collected and never compiled specifically in Pennsylvania so we know there's a requirement for screenings and for um, that information but we're not compiling it to look at a big picture. Um, so this is the parameters of the EOHSS, which is the Electronic Oral Health Screening System. Um, in conjunction with Dr. Greenberg and Dr. Sinclair, we have done research and development on an idea that, ac that can actually improve all of the areas I've identified. Um, it'll also help us create a screening standard, is what we're referring to it as. Um, so everybody's doing it the same way to share this information. We have one minute, so I'm going to jump to my next slide. Um, this slide is a photo directly from our tool. It's used to determine the disease levels in the patient's teeth. Um, and it also serves as a reference, so the determination of disease levels is consistent between patients and also between screeners. Um, specifically with our study, the first phase we've completed compared a hygienist screening results on one child to a dentist exam results on the same child. So the hygienist was using their gloved hand and just a flashlight, and the dentist was using x-rays and all applicable tools. Um, the results of the screening were captured in our tool using a tablet and a reporter. It saved the results and allowed us to generate a report on the findings for the sake of comparison. It also allowed us to digitally capture the results as opposed to a written report so we could generate a digital report after the screening. Um, so phase one essentially served to validate the use of screenings and to identify that we aren't creating that false sense of security. Um, phase two, which is still in development, is to work comparing hygienist to hygienist to create that standard. So one hygienist using maybe a headlamp and um, their gloved hand compared to a hygienist using a headlamp and maybe a mirror with a disposable sleeve and identifying a standard. Um, so at the end of the day, we can all um, use the same methodology and expect consistent results that we can share and compare with. 